Hey guys, welcome back to the Respiratory Therapy Resource Center. Thank you so much for clicking on my video today. So if you can do me a favor and subscribe to my channel, I would greatly appreciate it. Just click on that bottom right hand corner and hit subscribe. So after that, if you haven't already, please take a look at my website, respiratorytherapyrc.com for any updated eBooks that I've uploaded. And without further ado, I want to go ahead and lean into the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine. I have some great links for you guys to take a look at. And then at the end, I'll give you some of my key takeaways, okay? So let's begin. Hey guys, so these are the links that I used in order to collect my information to provide my key takeaways later on in the video. So I just wanted to show them to you right now so that you can read through them and feel comfortable with them, feel informed and empowered. So this is the NIH link and all it talks about is a kind of brief synopsis and overview of the study and the efficacy of the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine. And really, I'm going to talk about these things in the key takeaway section. But one of the important things I wanted to tell you was that this is where it talks about how um, Moderna is actually a company based out of Cambridge, Massachusetts. And if you know anything about the North or the Boston area, Massachusetts area, that's where a lot of our medicine, engineering, and technology come out of, right? So it's no surprise that Moderna has one of its headquarters based in Massachusetts, right? So the next link I have available to you guys is the New England Journal of Medicine article, right? So this article was published on November 12th, 2020, and it's basically talking about the phase one trial of the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine. So in the phase one trial, they took 45 healthy adults and separated them into three groups of vaccine doses, right? So you had three groups of 15 people. So you had 15, 15, and 15. The first group got a dose of 25 micrograms. The second group got a dose of 100 micrograms. And then the last group got a dose of 250 micrograms of vaccine, right? So what they did next was measure the antibody levels and the immune response to SARS-CoV-2, right? So the lowest level dose of 25 micrograms did have an immune response and did have an antibody production level, but each increase in dosing gave an increase in antibody production as well. So the bigger the dose, the bigger the response, the bigger the antibody production. That's how they chose to move forward with this vaccine, right? The COVID-19 vaccine. So they said, okay, our phase one trial has enough statistically significant evidence to show immunity being built, to show antibody production being produced. And this is the one that we're gonna move forward with into phase two. Because if you know anything about research and clinical trials, it's super, super expensive. So phase one is always gonna be one of the most important phases to verify that you're headed in the right direction before you spend millions and millions of dollars doing phase two and phase three, right? So this is where they found it to be effective at creating the antibodies in the body, right? So half of the participants experienced fatigue, chills, headache, myalgias, and pain at the site of the injection, which is not uncommon with vaccines, right? So other than that, really no other safety concerns were observed and they decided to move forward into phase two and phase three after this phase one clinical trial was done. So that's the link for that. You can read more about that. So this is the Nature article, and it was published on August 5th, 2020, and all it's really talking about is the spike protein being the antigen of interest for antibody binding in the production of the mRNA vaccine 1273. It's also talking a little bit about how they're using the old research of the MERS and SARS number one, right? The previous MERS outbreak, the previous SARS outbreak, and everyone's dusting off their research in those previous outbreaks in order to use that information and apply it here with the current outbreak of COVID-19. So the next one is the Moderna website, which has some really good information about how mRNA vaccines actually work. A little bit more information for you guys if you're like a little weary of the vaccine. How does it work? What is it? What does it do? What is it? what is the biological process and i talked about it a little bit in the previous video and i'm also going to talk about it later on in this video as well but here's another resource for you in case you want more information about how mrna vaccines work from the horse's mouth moderna the creator of this vaccine this particular vaccine right so the next link i'm going to share with you is the moderna protocol right so this is the clinical study protocol the main takeaway for this link is that this is the protocol for anybody who wants to recreate this study in its entirety 
This is the 135 pages how to recreate this study, right? So this is everything about the how, the who, the what, the acronyms, the observations, all of these things. If you want to recreate this study, this is what you would have to read, this 135 page protocol. And then another, you know, maybe a German agency, maybe a Swedish one is like, oh, we want to do our own study. We want to study this as well. And we're going to build off of that. Right. So that's that's what the purpose of the protocol is. So you can read through this. You can get a little more information as much as you want. You know, I want you to feel informed and empowered. So this last one is the Moderna Cove study. So all it's really talking about in this PDF is who was in the study what race and ethnicity they were, the age and gender of the people in the study, the risk factors for severe COVID-19 disease in that population, the evolution and diversity throughout the enrollment of the study, and uh, the geographic distribution of who was in it, where they were, what parts of the country they lived in. And so you may see some of yourself here, right? So, And it's a very diverse study, and I'll talk about that later on in the rest of the video, okay? so. These are the links and I hope you guys, you know, if you're really interested, take the time to go through it, read through some of these links and feel informed and empowered. That's my goal. And without further ado, I'm going to go on into the key takeaways from me and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video. All right. So as I said before, today we're going to talk about the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine and my key takeaways and how mRNA vaccines work. Don't forget to check out respiratorytherapyrc.com for any updated information I've uploaded on that website. So without further ado, Moderna, who are they, what are they, and what is their goal, right? So they're a company, a biotech company that was founded in 2010. They focus their research on viral vaccines, cancer vaccines, immunotherapies, and specifically mRNA vaccines. So some of the vaccines that they're trying to create include treatment for human metanumovirus, parainfluenza, cytomegalovirus, and it's funny because they're focused so much on mRNAs that even on the NASDAQ composite for stocks, their little stock name is mRNA. So that's how you know it's Moderna, right? So who participated, right? So who was in the actual phase three clinical trial. So we have a population of 63% Caucasian, 10% African American, 4% Asian American, as well as 20% Hispanic or Latino and 3% all other ethnicities and races, right? So this is a pretty clear picture of a diverse country just like the United States. So that's why they wanted to kind of split it up in a way that all people would be represented in the phase three clinical trial. So some of my personal key takeaways that I've gathered from the data reading it are that this vaccine is 94.5% effective. So that's great, right? You want the vaccine to be effective. You want it to show good data and results that it's going to provide protection to the people that take it. That's exactly what we're trying to achieve here, right? So 30,000 people were actually enrolled in this study at 100 research institutions across the country and across the globe, right? So 95 people actually ended up getting COVID-19, but 90 of those people were in the placebo group. So let me backtrack a little bit. When you have that number, 30,000 people trialing and participating in this phase three clinical trial, it doesn't mean all 30,000 people got the vaccine because it's a randomized clinical trial. So half of them got the vaccine and the other half didn't. So 15,000 people actually got vaccinated. So out of that number, we're going to see of the people who contract COVID-19, how many of those people are actually vaccinated, got the actual vaccine versus the people who got the placebo. Because the placebo is something that is not, it's like sugar water, it's normal saline, it's not going to have any kind of therapeutic benefit. That's how we know the results will be statistically significant, saying this many people got the placebo and most of the people who got COVID-19 were in the placebo group. So that's exactly what we have here. 95 people out of those 30,000 participants got COVID-19. 90 of them got the placebo, sugar, water, normal saline injection, right? So, and five were actually vaccinated. So when you do the math there, that's a 94.5% effective vaccine. And that's great. That's exactly what we want. And I didn't write it in the slide, but 
11 actually went to the hospital with severe COVID-19 symptoms, and none of those people actually received the vaccine, okay? So that's unfortunate for those 11 people, but they were in the placebo group, so they didn't get the vaccine. So that's a good sign. If we had 11 people who got severe COVID-19 and went to the hospital for it and were vaccinated, that wouldn't be good data, right? That would show that, oh, well, they got severe illness and went to the hospital, right? So that would not be good. But they were all placebo indicating that they didn't get any kind of immunity or protection because they didn't get the actual vaccine. So that's kind of how they gauge these things, right? So a little bit more about the actual vaccine. It's an mRNA vaccine. The name of it is mRNA1273. There were no serious safety concerns or, you know, issues, adverse events, side effects, other than the typical mild, like, headache, cold, chills, all of those things. Just like when you get the flu vaccine, you're going to stimulate an immune response, and it comes with maybe a day or two of feeling not so great, but it's better than and two weeks of full-blown COVID-19 possible hospitalization. Just it's like similar to to other vaccines where you might feel a little bit run down, but that's really all they saw. They didn't see any serious safety concerns from the vaccine, right? So it's a two-dose vaccine. You on day one, you get vaccinated, and again, you get a second booster vaccine on day 29. And then what they're doing this whole time. Since July 27th of 2020, they've been doing phase three clinical trials. And in that time period, they are collecting labs, collecting, you know, your antibody levels, right? So are you actually developing an immune response of the people that are getting vaccinated? And they're calculating that, oh, well, the antibodies against COVID-19 were growing in the vaccinated group and they were not growing in the placebo group. So that's how they're gauging it, right? Because you don't just get the vaccine and then not go to the doctor anymore. No, like these people are still carrying you and still watching you and still doing lab work on your blood to make sure that you are growing with that antibody level, right? So moving on. So going back to how mRNA vaccines work, let's talk a little bit about that again. I know I posted it in my last video. So going back to basic human biology, the dogma of DNA, RNA, mRNA, there's different types of RNA, but let's let's stick with mRNA, right? And then protein creation, right? So that this is how it works in the body. You have DNA that cannot leave the nucleus. You have it transcribed into mRNA, which can, and then mRNA goes out into the cytoplasm of the cell and gets translated into protein, right? So that's exactly what we're doing here. We're taking advantage of what's already in human biology. So transcription and translation, so you have the cytoplasm of a cell, right? And you have the nucleus of the cell, so that's where transcription is taking place, right? And then you have mRNA going and being translated into protein outside in the cytoplasm because mRNA is able to leave the nucleus of the cell. So this one, I wanted to create just a more graphic representation of how this process happens in the human body for people who just need that more visualization, right? So the vaccine works in a way that it doesn't have to disturb the nucleus of the cell. So then you get the injection, right? It's IM, intramuscular, and then what? The mRNA goes, it goes into your blood, it goes into your cytoplasm of your cells, it codes for the COVID-19 spike protein, it participates in translation, takes over that normal cell function, right? That's what we're taking advantage of. Creates the COVID-19 spike protein. The spike protein is what is going to be a foreign object in the body, so then our immune system is going to target it for destruction, right? So it's following the normal patterns and foundations of biology. That's how these mRNA vaccines work, right? So here's another graphic of how it works. You get the IM injection, intramuscular injection. You get the mRNA into your bloodstream. It goes into your cells. It creates the spike protein. The antibodies target and attack the spike protein. And then you have, boom, destruction of COVID-19 before you're able to get super, super sick with COVID-19. So that's how it works. So don't forget, the name of the game is whoever can get antibodies into humans before they get sick is the winner.
that's basically what it is, right? So we have several ways. We have convalescent plasma, taking antibodies from other human patients who have recovered from COVID-19. We have vaccines that stimulate antibody production in humans following the normal processes of biology and the immune system. We have monoclonal antibodies that are created in labs, just like Regeneron I talked about in another video. You feel free to go to my video section and click on that video because that's a very interesting drug as well. Those are created in laboratories, right? So the name of the game, like I said, is create antibodies or get antibodies in the blood to target COVID-19 for destruction. Because if our body knows that COVID is there, is targeting COVID-19 for destruction, then you won't get sick. We are using the foundations of the immune system to target these things and not just COVID-19, but a lot of other diseases, right? So that we don't have to go through the full phase of illness, get hospitalized or die, right? So that's how all of these things work. So I hope this video kind of gives you guys more of a more of a grasp on like what we're trying to do and what's actually going on with COVID-19 in terms of vaccines and other therapeutics that are being developed. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something from this video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Take a look at some of my other videos. I talked about the Pfizer vaccine in a previous video. I've talked about Regeneron as a monoclonal antibody therapeutic. So there's some other videos you guys might enjoy. And I really hope you guys stay safe and have a great day, okay? Take care. Bye.